Well, having grown up in Harlem in the 50s and the 60s, as well as the Bronx, um, you grew up in a world that was in major transformation. Um, even though I grew up in New York City, which was ostensibly a very integrated cosmopolitan area, sections of the city were significantly segregated in terms of housing. Uh, schooling was generally de facto segregated. So there were a lot of things that you saw back at that time which were pretty stark embodiments of two different Americas. The opportunity to um, go to some relatively elite institutions. I went to prep school in Connecticut for three years and was a significant sort of vanguard force of a new type of person coming into that environment. And then I subsequently went to Columbia University as an undergraduate the year after they had had their big revolution. And so in each scenario, there were new big changes happening. And then finally, um, in my Columbia University experience, during, at the end of my freshman year, I was a former, one of the f people who formed a group called Sha Na Na. We did rock and roll that played Woodstock that summer, which just had its 40th anniversary this past weekend. And so therefore, I was now in another sort of circumstance, which was a creative artistic environment, which nonetheless was, once again, me being the only one out of a larger group of cohort of majority people. And so in each and every circumstance, these were wonderful opportunities, but they always had an inherent subtextual kind of strain. A lot of it had to do with the fact that growing up in the environments that I grew up in, in the projects in New York City, I really saw an extraordinarily high level of smart, dynamic young people whose lives were destroyed by the sociological factors around us. Uh, people who were the fastest runners, the smartest kids, the best athletes, where their lives were destroyed before they got out of their teens because of the pathological conditions around us. And so that merely, to me, was an incredible sense of loss. I always felt that there were others who really should have been there with me who weren't given that opportunity. So therefore, that gives you a sense of wanting to make sure that you do create windows of opportunity when and where possible for their metaphoric little sisters, little brothers, children, grandchildren, and that sort of thing. When you come out of a background of having been exposed to adversity at an early age, you tend to have a commitment to wanting to share opportunities. And very often you'll find that people who do come from those backgrounds share opportunities with everyone. That's the kind of dynamic that I see as being part of my story, is just that it's important that one not just give back in that traditional sense, but just make it a way of life that you see fairness as being a key operative dynamic in life. If we don't have someone who can enable there to be dialogue and enable people to reflect on circumstances of social stress and social problems, then things remain the same. And sometimes dialogue is not easy. Sometimes overtly dealing with an issue of social complexity is problematic and a lot of people would prefer to basically go home and have dinner and turn on you know NBC but in all actuality it's important to make the world a better place and that only comes with the work